some of you already noticed that we we have a store next to us fixed price so after this service you come up there and that half of our church is in that store and last week uh, our kids also came after the service and they started choosing the books firstly they look at the pictures why did they look at the pictures they understand if they like this book or not on the basis of the pictures if they like the picture they would like to read it to read this book what is written in this book and vice versa so in the scripture it's written that all of our lives our actions that we are the pictures God's pictures in his story and when people look at us they look the pictures of our life they look at our life our actions our words our families and after that they decide if they want to read this book or not we can attract people to the gospel by our lives or reject them and this is a new situation and it was at the very beginning we still continue to read the book of titus second chapter first through tens verses That's what Paul is talking about, that our lives are the ornament to the Savior, God. And Paul writes that many believers of the island Crete, they live the way that all the neighbors, when they, they, they looked at the believers and they saw that they didn't really live by the word of God. And like non-believer neighbors, they blamed believers of um, bad behavior. And because of the negative behavior of believers, uh, the gospel lost its action. So sometimes even believers did this action that even Gentiles felt shamed because they didn't do these things. All these believers, they were lying, the families were broken, they knew that they knew God. But in the 16th verse, it says that by their actions, they were renouncing God. And one of my friends looking at this situation once said, he said, like, if these are Christians, I would better believe in Buddhism. And it's really sad. It's really sad picture. That's why Paul instructs Titus um, to teach believers to live by the gospel. He says that you should teach what accords with sound doctrine. They didn't have a sound do doctrine, and these doctrines were breaking their families, their lives. And he tells that he needed to teach the right doctrine. And last time we were reading that believers don't need to live by the wrong teachings, by the rules that people make up. But it doesn't mean that we need to live immorally and without control. All spheres of our lives uh, should be built on the gospel because we are um, uh, we are bought by His blood and His grace is working in our lives. And the fruit of this grace should be seen in our lives to God and to people. Next Sunday, we're going to read next in the next Sunday but what God is talking about this grace that we should be an ornament to the gospel because this grace of God 
came here and this grace saves all the people and that teaches us so you can just guys read second verse 10 through 14 here are the basics of our behavior we can't just change ourselves with moral actions we should reborn be reborn we should have grace in our lives and god comes and gives us the new heart and this new heart affects all spheres of our lives and our behavior and our worldview and this way we become an ornament uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ if we say that we know God it should be evident in our lives we should be beautiful illustrations of God's story of this great history what does it practically look like how does it look like in real life and Paul describes it as and he talks about different categories of people it all starts with leadership of the church he instructs Titus to put away people from the leadership positions and put other people but the decision of the prob problems is not limited by the leadership the leaders should be living worthy of God worthy of the gospel men women young and old slave and free let's look at all the categories that paul is talking about the first application is to older men second verse is saying that older men are to be sober-minded dignified self-control sound in faith and love and instead fat fastness uh we're talking about older men do we have older men here yes we do we hear here four characteristic characteristics the first one is to be sober-minded so Paul is choosing the characteristic to be sober-minded when the captain is leading the boat across the ocean the boat of his life there are some iber icebergs some currents other boats and the storm can even happen and so that the captain can lead the boat across the ocean the captain should be sober-minded he should be putting all attention to this he should have self-control otherwise the boat would crash and it will be a tragedy so that's why paul talks about older men so that sh they should be sober-minded the second characteristic is to be dignified the first characteristic is inner characteristic the second characteristic is talking about being dignified. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, behave yourself worthy of God. So, so please keep in mind that believers shouldn't be in a hurry. You should be dignified. It's otherwise uh, otherwise will people laugh at you or will be panicking at looking at you the third characteristic that Paul is talking about is to be self-controlled and Paul is talking about this characteristic for the five time five times so it was so ser such a serious problem about being self-controlled so that Paul is always using this characteristic several times so what does it mean to be self-controlled so you need to be whole um, whole minded so you you should control all spheres of your life and so he calls on to man to be self-controlled he the fourth characteristic he ta ta talks about like be sound in faith in love and in steadfastness so your faith should be healthy it should be based on his word on his grace you should be sound in love year by year you should love god more and more and love your neighbors as yourself as it's written in their masks also steadfastness so 
you should have patience. You always have different trials, difficulties, and you overcome them. And you know by your personal experience that God is faithful. That's what Paul is talking about, about men. Men, this is our picture. This is the picture of us in the gospel of Jesus Christ that should attract other people to this gospel. The next category of people is referred to older women so that older women likewise are to be relevant in behavior, not slanders or s slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and train young women. So all characteristic, all these four characteristics they're talking about, so like be dressed decently. So he doesn't talk about inner qualities. He starts with outer characteristics. So be dressed decently. So it means um, like dress well. So it talks about the believer woman, how she behaves herself, what kind of facial expression she has. A believer woman should remember that she is not a Gentile. She is a holy daughter of God and she should be decent as you should um, dress up like uh, like holy people do. Can you imagine that my phone is not turned off? So it's a reminder that we're all sinners. So if you don't didn't turn off your phone, please turn it off. So first characteristic is uh, dress well. Older women likewise are to be relevant in behavior. So, so you wouldn't be able to define if it was a believer or not believer in ancient times. So the second characteristic he talks about don't gossip. So this sin is talked about 34 times in in the Bible. So they so. He says, please watch your tongue, all gossips and bad talks uh, that cause conflicts. So they're not leading to glorify God. So the next characteristic is that Paul is talking about is don't drink wine. So for most women, it seems like, oh, it's not a problem to me. But unfortunately, we know, we all know the examples when in the lives of women, it's a problem. Some men are drinking as well. It's also a tragedy for men. But when we talk about women, when women drink, women get down to the bottom of life. Sisters, please be careful. Watch out for the alcohol, how it affects to you. And the last characteristic is instruct young sisters and teach them good. So, and the last one, when you have the order in the first three areas, and then he says, please instruct younger sister to do the same. So youth, please don't just talk to yourself and hang out with yourself. Look for the older uh, disciples because you will be taught from them. You will learn a lot from them how to bring, your, bring up your children, your young Friends will not teach you how to do this. You need experienced older sisters. Older women also, please don't talk just to yourself. Invite younger women. You should be energized, encouraged by their youth. So please have this um, relationships between generations. And the application to young women. Fourth and fifth verse. He says, train young women to love their husbands, children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, so that the word of God will, may not be revealed. Seven characteristics uh, to the young woman. It's amazing that it's not 
these characteristics are not talking about the work. And this world is always talking about, oh, forget about your house, husband, children. You should self, you should have, a, you should be self-realized. You should work. It doesn't mean that the believer woman cannot work or create a career, but it means that it's not what defines her. Husband, house, family, clean house, wisdom. The first Paul that Paul pays attention to is love your husband. This is the third quality. Not your uh, work, career, mom. First, love your husband. <clears throat> How is it possible? You all know. You all know the details. We had uh, a sermon in the fall. You can watch it on YouTube. But the very interesting observation is that in order to love your husband, you should get married. If you don't have a husband, you should get married first. It's a very important observation. So you should purposefully pray for this, move towards this direction. Look on the right to the left. So this is the first uh, step to love your husband. We should understand that it's not just talking about the romantic relationships, it's talking about the skills. If a spaceman is given a spaceship and he, and you tell him, okay, go to Mars and just figure out how to fly. And the spaceship is not going to fly to Mars. You should teach him how to fly and use this spaceship. The same with the relationships. When you get married, when you give birth to children, you don't know what family relationships look like. It's a practice. It's a skill. So older women, please teach uh, younger sisters how to teach their husbands. Second, he talks about how to love their kids. Our neighbors, uh, it just happened on WhatsApp, like one of our s uh, neighbors said, oh, like our child is not sleeping well. He eats well, but we gave him to the kindergarten and all the mothers are saying, oh, this child needs so socialization. He needs to go to the kindergarten, but it's a strategy. <clears throat> you will break um, damage uh, to this child. God gave you this child not to be in the kindergarten. The child should be with you, with his parents, grandmothers, grandfathers. Of course, I understand there are some single moms and they don't have any other choice but to give their child to the kindergarten. We all were born in the Soviet Union. We all were in the kindergarten and we think, oh, our kids can do it too. But it's a psychological trauma for the kids to be in the kindergarten. So that's why this commandment to you, love your children, enjoy them. And children here are in the plural sense. So, dear moms, give birth to kids. You will not regret when you're older. And sometimes some women, they just regret that they were working, they were moving and moving, and they didn't, and didn't give birth to the children. And this ability to give birth, it's such a short time that gives you, that God gives you. Please give birth to children, enjoy these children. And just recently we had a seminar dedicated to five life languages. It, and I see that Sasha is here and she is sitting here with her daughter. How can you love your children? Five love languages. Do you remember? Words of encouragement. Second is presence. Uh, touch. So touching your kids. Hugging. Encouragement. Spending time with them. Read the books to them. Play with them. Go for a walk with them. Help them. And of course, yeah. If you know 
the love language of your child, please love your child with that love language that you know he has. Love your husband, love your children, be self-controlled, control your emotions, your impulses, control your impulses to buy something. shopping and be self-controlled, be pure. It talks about purity, sexual purity, first of all. Believer women should remember that. Please settle your house. Be uh, the woman of your house so that your husband and kids would feel comfortable to be at your house. Be kind. But it seems clear to be good, right? But it was not clear to the believers on the island Creed. And Paul, and the seventh one, Paul says, like, submit to your husbands. Paul separated that, love your husband and be submissive to your husband. So it talks about humility here. So it's probably in their culture there was a problem when women didn't think that humility is a virtue. They didn't submit to their husbands. It's not talking about the Arabic submissiveness. You shouldn't be a slave. But if a believer woman is not respected her husband, their family is not going to be happy. If a woman is not respecting her husband, it's not going to be a good family. And Paul finishes these verses by be submissive to your husbands and so that the word of God will not be revealed so that so that she doesn't love her husband she forgot her children and she talks to other men it, it would be a shame for the gospel shame for God young women this is the picture that Apostle Paul is given us it's the story of god in your life and the last group that god is addressing it's to young men today we're going to talk exactly about young men for women for women six characteristic and for for men it's just one characteristic it talks about about be self-controlled why does he give only one quality to men? Because this characteristic, this quality is the most difficult for men. It's the question of pornography, of lust, and this ruins the life of many men. And that's why Paul is talking about this. If you're going to figure out this problem in your life, you will solve all other problems. Please figure out this problem. Young women probably had so sexual immorality. They probably went to different institutions and had parties at night. So it probably looks like the life in Astana at night. So brothers of the church, of Shanarak church, we should be different from them and we should have victory in this uh, topic. This is the pictures of God's uh, story in our lives. And I'm going to, as I said, we're going to talk about this next Sunday, how the gospel should be reflected in our work ethics, relationships with neighbors. But what does this word mean to us? Listening, reading these uh, passages, we understand we're not perfect. We can't say that we're all perfect. We see our mistakes, our sins. And we understand that most likely in this world, our pictures are not going to be perfect in our lives. But God doesn't expect perfect pictures. But our pictures shouldn't distract and reject people from God. People, our stories should attract people. A person, a non-believer looking at us should say, I, sh I want to believe in his God. I want to be a part of this gospel. Last week, 
one of our men came to church and after the service he said oh i want to talk to you he said i looked at the people while i was worshiping god and i really want to do the same as they do i want to raise my hands to god without shame to the holy god and that's what is written in the um, corinthians it says when a non-believer comes to your church looking at you this non-believer should say god is here and looking at you he should say that this is our goal that's what we need to strive for with his grace with the holy spirit and if you are um as a guest here if you're not a believer god loves you we love you and we're so glad that you came here probably you have some negative experience talking to other believers and probably you saw hypocrisy lies lust sin and those pictures probably reject like doesn't let you come to god it's really sad but on the other hand i want to tell you if you're gonna look not at broken people but at jesus himself he will not let you down he will not disappoint you and today you have an opportunity to look at his picture at his cross at the empty grave and he died and he got resurrected for your salvation look at his throne shining throne and he's sitting and reigning there over our world and he will come back from there to judge all life and death people are not perfect but god is perfect read his story call on his name repent in your sins give him your life and accept his reign let's pray heavenly father we're so thankful for this opportunity to get together we're so thankful for your grace to be renewed every morning and we can love you have relationships with you thank you for this opportunity to open the holy bible read your holy word and your word is so alive even thousand years and we're so thankful that we can accept this word with open hearts purified hearts by your holy spirit and the holy spirit wrote this word and he gives us the understanding of this word and we're talking about the very important sphere of our life our behavior we can't be holy and be justified by our behavior but when your light comes to your lives when your grace comes to your life when you put the seeds in our lives the seeds of the heaven you expect that our lives would be changed people say that people cannot change but if people cannot change then your gospel is a lie because your gospel is telling us that you can change us you can and we want that this would be true because your gospel is true we want to change we want to bring fruits to you we don't want to be ashamed in your eyes we want so that people looking at us at our actions words our appearance our family church morality so that people would say i want to believe in this guy god i want to be a part of this story tell me about god please bless us with this life with this life that would attract other people please bless us in our imperfection our brokenness so that we would come to you jesus we know that you are a perfect god and we look at you we look at the cross we look at the empty grave we look at the hill that you were ascended to heaven to we look at the heavenly jerusalem yet you sit there and that you send our holy spirit your holy spirit to us we look at your throne that you reign from as a king of this world and we believe in you you're our god you're a king you're a savior please lead us as a good shepherd 
Please forgive us for our sins and we love you and ask for your blessing for the whole week. Amen. And now we have the time of communion and this is the ministry for believers. Those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. If you're not a believer, you have an opportunity to come to Jesus, to proclaim your sins before Jesus. And if you are already a believer, try to reflect on God's Word, pray, look in your heart, what is the Holy Spirit telling you? If you feel the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God in your heart, please respond to this Word. And when you're ready, come up here, eat and drink and accept God's blessing.